Good morning. I want to welcome you to our daily devotion time this morning. It's Tuesday morning, and as we start out our day, we want to start it out with God. Because if we start our day out with God and we end our day with God, the things that happen in between, God will take care of those things. And that should be important to every one of us. It's important to me. We're going to start a new book today by God's grace, the book of Ephesians. It's a book of reconciliation, how that God and man are reconciled, written by the Apostle Paul as a prisoner in Rome. This is part of the uh, what is commonly called the prison epistles. And as we start out this day, I'd like for us to look briefly at verses 1 and 2 out of chapter 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus, by the will of God to the saints which are at the Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. As we go to the Lord in prayer this morning, I want to ask you to remember the nation of America, the United States of America, the leadership, to remember those who are called Christians, the leadership of our local churches, that God's purpose would be fulfilled in their lives. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, I thank you for the promises that you have bestowed upon us and the knowing that we can stand on those promises and that they shall never be taken. Lord, as we start a new book this morning by your wonderful grace, I pray, Lord, that may the Holy Spirit prepare my heart to share. And Lord, may that same Holy Spirit prepare the hearts of those that would receive to understand. Remember our nation, Lord. Remember the United States of America and its leaders. Remember our local churches and those leaders. God, I pray, utilize us in the name of Christ. Amen. Now, you've heard that God has a plan. I mean, I've talked about it and others have talked about it and we've heard it all of our lives. God has a plan for the believer's life, a plan for every one of us. Yet, when it comes to you personally, perhaps you've not really understood what God wants you to do with your life. Now, maybe, maybe you've asked yourself, is there supposed to be more to life than this? I pondered that. I'm sure you pondered that question. When will God show me his plan for my life? Just exactly what he wants me to do. Why doesn't God tell me in plain speech what he wants me to do with my life? You know, just write it out. Step one, step two, step three. You know, that'd be great, wouldn't it? God wants you and I to understand his call upon our lives. But to understand, you and I must investigate his call. Now let us note here how Paul begins this letter to the Ephesians. He begins it with one of the greatest subjects imaginable, the call of God. Nothing could be more meaningful to a person than to be called by God himself, the sovereign Lord and majesty of the universe. Now Paul says that he was an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. Now there's at least four significant points here that we need to look at. Paul was greatly privileged. There was no greater privilege in all the world than the privilege of serving Jesus. I can attest in my short span of being a servant of Christ. The greatest privilege, whew, 
the greatest privilege that's ever been bestowed in my life is to serve the Lord. Jesus Christ is the very Son of God himself, the supreme Lord of the universe in all of its enormity. No matter how far out the universe may reach, no matter how many universes there may be, Jesus Christ is the majestic Lord of all. He rules, he reigns as God Almighty. Now the word apostle means one that is called, one that is sent on a special mission. The mission given to Paul was that, that of a messenger. The Lord Jesus called Paul to proclaim the glorious message of salvation to the world. Now, the point would be this. Jesus Christ is not only the sovereign Lord of the universe, he is the Savior of the world. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son to save the world. Any person who believes in Jesus Christ will not perish, but have everlasting life. Hallelujah. Christ needs messengers who will take that glorious news of salvation to the world. This was the call of God to Paul to be a messenger of Jesus Christ to the world. Now, as I said, Christ needs messengers. Many hundreds of years have passed and the world still has not been reached with the glorious news of Jesus. God's very own son. There will be great sorrow to the man who has been called and does not go. If God calls us, we must go or face a terrible day of accountability. What did Jesus tell us in, in, in John chapter 15? You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Now, Paul was possessed by Jesus. The supreme Lord and majesty of the universe had humbled himself to come to this earth to save it. God's very own son has given man the privilege and I want to tell you something, it's a privilege of knowing him in the most personal way as our Savior and our Lord. Now, Paul knew Christ and knew him personally. Imagine knowing the Son of God personally. No greater privilege could exist. Paul knew this. Therefore, he surrendered his life completely unequivocally, completely. All he was, all he had, Paul turned over to the Lord Jesus. He was possessed and up, obsessed with Christ. He lived for Christ and for Christ alone. Christ was Paul's savior, but he also was his Lord and his master. He was not his own to do as he will, but he was Christ to do only as Christ willed. Matthew 16, then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, follow me. Now Paul was called by the will of God. Who he was, what he was doing, was God's will. His work, employment were chosen by God, not by Paul. He had not chosen the ministry because it was a good profession to enter or because some friends thought that he, he would make this great preacher or, he, or just a good preacher. He was a minister because God called him. The same can be said of Sunday school teachers and of deacons. These are all called positions of God. Now, how many of us can say that what we are doing is God's will? How many of us are sure that our work and profession 
are of God, that we are right where God wants us to be. Are we working, serving where God wants us or where we want to be? I mean, you know, there's, there's a big difference. Are we in God's will or out of God's will? The psalmist said, I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. Now, how many of you have heard the story behind the old hymn, I Surrender All? Now, I think all of us can relate to this story if we are of the surrendered. That was told by the two composers. The old boy said for years and years and years and years that he'd been studying art. He said, my whole life was wrapped up in his pursuit and the furthest thing from my mind was an active Christian service. My dream was to become an outstanding and famous artist. The Spirit of God was strongly urging me to give up teaching and to enter the evangelistic field. But I would not yield. I still had this burning desire, he said, to be an artist. He said the battle raged for five years. At last the time came when he said that he just could not hold out any longer. And that he said, I surrender my all. My time, my talents. That was, it was then that a brand new day was ushered into my life. I became an evangelist and discovered that deep down in my soul was a hidden talent unknown to me. God had hidden a song in my heart and touching a tender chord, he caused me to sing songs I had never sung before. And it was at this time that he wrote, I surrender all. In memory of the time when after a long struggle, that he had surrendered and dedicated his life to active Christian service for the Lord. Do you remember? All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him. In his presence daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee. My blessed Savior, I surrender all. Now, as we go through this Tuesday, lots of things that we may face. But as you think about this passage of Scripture, there's a couple things I'd like you to ponder. There's some out here that will hear this today that Christ has been speaking to you. The Holy Spirit's been tugging at your heart for some things. Have you been called by God to be a messenger of our Lord to the world? Have you surrendered to God's call to share Christ? What kind of life does a person live if he's possessed by Christ and I want you to think about this especially for those that have not accepted the call when were you first aware of God's call upon your life why is it important for you to know I mean know God's plan and God's will for your life have you fully surrendered to that call? God's calling some of you. God's got a calling upon your life. Will you be like Samuel and say, Here I am, Lord. Here I am. It is I. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for a call that 
you gave me one day. I thank you for that, Lord. Call of salvation and the call to share. Call to teach and call to preach. I am so thankful. Though it be in the last days of my life, I am so thankful to be able to share that you have burnt my heart with in the name of Christ. Amen.